Okay. This is the bangle. They have a different size. So how much usually is a bangle sold for? How much that's is this? Five. That's fine. Is it you that's selling? Selling. Okay, that's right. All this ivory. Allah. All this ivory. This one. <gasps> now you cover them. You cannot use bone cap. Now you cover them. Wow. How much are you selling it? Hundred. One fifty k. Since 2015, Nigeria has been the primary exit point for pangolin scales and elephant ivory trafficked from Africa to Asia. Through highly organized and sophisticated operations, wildlife trafficking has become the world's fourth most lucrative transnational crime, following right behind the trafficking of drugs, weapons, and human beings. Jack on Day Market, a busy market in Lagos, popular for arts and crafts but the underground ivory trade here is not as well known. Elephant come from Cameroon, mm. Kenya, Central Africa. Yeah, we used to get, but not all. Wow. You know, there's security, yeah. there's no way we have That's true. for that yeah. about site. Entry in Nigeria. Yeah. You know that and Kari mm -hmm. foreigns now. This is nicely carved though. Is it you that's carving them? Not me, not me, but it was carved in this market also. It was carved in this yeah. market? One artist for this market, so I did this thing. Yeah. Now, like, want, should I call him for you now? now? Other wildlife products like lion teeth and claws are also on sale here. In 2013, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, CITES, initiated the National Ivory Action Plans for countries involved in the illegal ivory trade including Nigeria, to report on their efforts to tackle the trade. But since the launch of this action plan, there have only been three reported convictions in Nigeria. 25 cases were abandoned cases, as sacks of ivory had been found, but there was no further action or investigation. Well, I'm not aware of any customs uh, abandoned case. Uh, maybe you've done your investigation to other uh, ministries or uh, parastatas and you've discovered that one or two of their cases are abandoned. Uh, since I do not know about uh, their cases and why they are abandoned, I may not be the right person to provide uh, the reasons uh, why. Uh, but as far as customs is concerned, all our cases that are before the court are not abandoned. Our legal departments are following them, and um, even though we are not in control of the time frame it will take uh, to reach justice, of course you know that is not um, uh, in our hands, but that we will continue to follow these cases to its logical conclusion is something we are determined to do. Yet, while Nigeria is implicated in the seizures of more than 30 tons of elephant ivory since 2015, there are fewer than 500 elephants in the country. So, where is the ivory coming from? The sheer scale of the ivory trade, coupled with a severe decline in elephant populations in other African countries, does suggest that this is not just a Nigerian problem, but an African one. According to the Environmental Investigation Agency, most wildlife traffic through Nigeria is sourced in Cameroon, Gabon, the Central African Republic, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. On the 4th of August, 2021, the Nigeria Customs Service invited us to a press briefing on the seizure of over 22 billion naira, the equivalent of $54 million, worth of elephant ivory and pangolin scales. This was the eighth largest global seizure of pangolin scales since 2019, indicative of Nigeria's active role in the illegal trade. A month later, acting on intelligence provided by the Wildlife Justice Commission, the Nigeria Customs Service seized another ton of pangolin scales representing over 2,500 dead pangolins. Two suspects were arrested, and it's believed that they are linked to the same criminal network involved in the previous large-scale seizure. 
To achieve their goals, wildlife traffickers often work with a network of corrupt authorities. This is believed to be a reason why Nigeria is a convenient transit hub. Because not only do several investigations conclude that bribes can easily be paid, but these criminals can also take advantage of the diverse trade connections and transport links within the country. We cannot deny the role as well that corruption is playing here. For Nigeria to emerge as the key transit hub on the continent for the trafficking of wildlife products, there has to be accountability. How has it gotten to this point? Well, I'm not in the mind of criminals, so I, I, I really uh, cannot uh, uh, say exactly how we've gotten to this point. But to the extent that uh, some Nigerians uh, make quick money by cooperating with criminals, uh, to the extent that um, uh, some people are willing to uh, uh, compromise the integrity of their nation because of what they stand to gain. Uh, you also recall that uh, the, the, the recent large seizure in Lagos uh, were evacuated from a, a, a warehouse. Somebody owned that house, somebody provided uh, that apartment to be used as a warehouse for this uh, criminal element. So, uh, and that's why there's law because of the fact that there are human beings uh, who are ready to uh, uh, break the law or do what the law says they should not do uh, because they stand to gain something. And that's why there are law enforcement agencies uh, like the customs, the police and others uh, to do the needful. And the needful is to arrest them and bring them to justice, just as what we are doing. Most of the world's major armed conflicts have occurred within biodiversity hotspots, such as national parks and wildlife sanctuaries. Governments and organizations around the globe have expressed strong concerns about wildlife poaching funding global terrorist networks. In 2016, a report published by the Los Angeles-based Earth League International, which fights wildlife crime, estimated that proceeds from the trade in ivory could have supplied up to 40% of the funds that Al-Shabaab needed to pay the salaries to its army of roughly 5,000 men at the time. And in 2018, Gabonese officials announced the breakup of the country's largest smuggling network and stated that their investigations revealed links to Boko Haram. As Nigeria rose to the top of the ranks for the illegal trade of elephant ivory and pangolin scales in Africa, countries like Kenya and Tanzania have climbed down the ladder. To achieve this, it took political will, public support and law enforcement stepping up. In April 2016, Kenya held the world's largest ivory burn to send a message to traffickers and consumers that the country would not stand for the trade. Thick plumes of smoke and ash covered the skies as tons of elephant tusks and rhino horns from an estimated 8,000 elephants and 300 rhinos were burnt for all to see. There usually isn't much clarity with exactly what happens to these items after they're seized and court cases are ongoing. For example, how, how can we be sure that the items that were seized from the January seizure that are currently sitting at the ports are still intact? I, I think this question uh, stems from a mindset that is very unfair to us as a nation, is very unfair to the system of the country, uh, that, that appears to me as uh, questioning the integrity of our security system or even the judicial system. I have told you uh, that the three people that uh, were arrested, and of course which you were told you were there, and uh, are presently uh, being prosecuted, and at each appearances, at least so far two appearances that I know of, we have ensured that journalists are part of the process. So we have nothing to hide. So I, I, I don't think um, it would be fair for anybody to begin to ask, how would you know that these things are intact? It's just like, how would you uh, know that Nigeria as a nation uh, means what it says? And I think that is not a fair question. So all roads are unfortunately leading to Nigeria, an easier transit route for traffickers. But these containers are usually not destined for China or Vietnam just yet. 
Usually, the transits or transshipment points will be another location in Southeast Asia first. The Nigeria-Singapore-Vietnam smuggling route has been identified as a significant transportation route for the smuggling of scales and ivory. At the transit point, items are repacked and containers are moved from one shipment to another for onward travel to China or Vietnam. The reason for this is simple. Traffickers usually have corrupt freight and shipping agents in these countries that can help them to make it appear as though their shipments were exported from one of these countries and not Africa, which helps them to bypass risk profiling systems. With a ban on elephant ivory in China and Vietnam, and a more recent crackdown on the use of pangolin scales, these are methods that traffickers rely on to get their products to their final destination. This is a criminal network, operated by both foreign and domestic actors, cartels operating just as drug cartels do, making billions of illegal dollars and fueling more poverty in environments that are already poverty-stricken. But it's very possible to turn things around. To effectively tackle the illegal wildlife trade, Nigeria needs to address widespread corruption, the lack of law enforcement, and mobilize the public to report wildlife crime. Customs and the Ministry of Environment are already working with several partners to deal with these issues, especially detecting and prosecuting wildlife traffickers. Nigeria also needs to increase cooperation with transit and destination countries in Asia to disrupt wildlife crime networks. Our elephants and pangolins desperately need help to survive, and we can save them if we work collectively to report wildlife crime and push enforcement authorities to prosecute offenders. Leila Johnson Salami, Arise News.